All right, Governor Richardson, thanks for returning to your show and answering the viewers' questions. And the economy is one of the topics on their minds. Energy, though, is tops, more than a rock. A recent NBC News Wall Street Journal poll coming out that that's one of their pressing concerns. And the first one will start off here with P. Spence from Elbert, Colorado. Explain how you would make this country oil independent. Do you or do you not support drilling for oil where it can be found in this country? I support responsible drilling, and we can do it in the Rocky Mountain West. We can do it uh, all over this country. There are 68 million leases that the oil companies have not drilled in. What I don't support is drilling in ecosystems, in the Arctic, in the outer continental shelf, uh, drilling offshore. Let's do it responsibly. Let's have a policy of conservation, of fuel efficiency, of renewable energy. And this one, touching on that point, this one, Kay writing in there, would like you to address how opening up drilling offshore and in Alaska would not help the current or future oil crisis without increasing our storage and refining capacity. Well, if you drill offshore, it's going to take 10 years, first of all, to lower gasoline prices. This is the Energy Information Agency. I'm a former Secretary of Energy and I had to deal with these issues. I do believe that uh, what is most pressing is let's drill responsibly in the United States, but let's have a comprehensive policy. Fuel efficiency in vehicles, 50 miles per gallon. More investments in renewable technology. Making sure that every citizen is more conscious of, of, of being energy efficient. Mass transit. I mean, here in Denver, here in Colorado, uh, the need for light rail and commuter rail and instead of just uh, clogged highways is, is essential in having a comprehensive strategy. And the, the King's team has talked about this, about drilling. The time is now. We need to find ways here. Do you see Barack Obama as an obstructionist from this point? Senator McCain is using gimmicks. The first thing he said is we're going to have a gas tax holiday, get everybody a rebate for three months. That's not going to make a difference. And what Senator Obama has said is let's drill responsibly, but let's have a comprehensive policy, not quick fixes like Senator McCain and the Bush administration. Let's have fuel efficiency and conservation. Let's invest in renewable energy and technology. Let's have more fuel efficient vehicles. Let's invest in biofuels and biodiesel and new technologies. And the West and Denver and Colorado can be the birthplace of a lot of these solar and wind energies that need to be developed here. A lot of people on the Democratic side like to blame the eight years of the Bush administration on this, but even your time during the Clinton administration, why are we still talking about this? Why is it still a big problem in this country? Well, look, Democratic and Republican administrations have not faced the energy crisis. I admit this. I mean, we pushed hard for renewable energy. We couldn't get the votes. But what we need is to go beyond party. And what I think Obama brings is bipartisanship. He could get an energy bill through the Congress that drills responsibly, but in the United States, not overseas, more refining capacity, more investments in renewable technology, more fuel efficient vehicles, the way he's talked to Detroit and said, we gotta make cars that are more energy efficient, mass transit, light rail, uh, investments in solar and wind and biofuels and biodiesel. That's what Obama stands for, a comprehensive policy. He's made it clear, his plans, but how realistic is that, the funding for that, to make that happen? Well, it's realistic because if you devote tax incentives, you work with the private sector, but you also have federal investment, you can make it happen. It's a question of budget priority. And this administration has funded a war that is costing $10 billion a week, and that's taking away from energy and health care and education. Obama would shift those priorities. Energy, one of the big topics, but you mentioned the war, and that's still not far from the minds of many people. Linda, for example, from Louisville. What are the contrasts between Senators McCain and Obama on the issue of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan? And a two-parter here after that, how does our current involvement in these two hotspots affect our domestic needs? Well, it affects our domestic needs, the war in Iraq, which McCain wants to continue because it costs $10 billion a week, funds that should go into education, health care, job training for our own people. Secondly, the contrast is very clear. Senator McCain wants to stay in the war, wants to continue bringing troops in. Senator Obama says, let's have a timetable, get them out in 16 months responsibly, have diplomacy uh, come into the region and set up a structure in Iraq that protects America's interests, 
that gives the Iraqis a chance, that lets Iraq take over their own security. I think what is most fundamental on the Iraq situation is the Iraqi Prime Minister agrees with Senator Obama's position for a timetable of withdrawal, just the combat troops, for 16 months. 